Good evening, everybody, and a huge, huge welcome to the Nurture Your Heart to Greatness course. Uh, this evening, we have some amazing families on to join in our Q&A and discussion, and we also have naturopath Nathan joining us tonight. So what, what I would like to actually do um, at the start of, of each session, and we have some, um, some new people on tonight, which is fantastic, is um, I'd like to invite everybody to invite themselves, in, uh, invite themselves, introduce <laughs> themselves, uh, and, um, and say a little bit about yourself. So even if you've been on a prior call, because the new people who are jumping on haven't met you, so just briefly who you are and a little bit about yourself. Uh, where you're at with your journey. So just me looking at the screen at the moment, seeing who's on here. We've got somebody who's completed a course, a family who's part way through, and a couple of people, one person who's a bit familiar with it and one person who's got very little idea. So we're all at really different places. So introduce yourself. Let us know where you're at with um, with the Nurtured Heart approach. If you're going through the modules, maybe you can share where you're at with the module, what you're currently working on, what you're currently learning on. If you have been implementing, I put all this in the chat. If you have been implementing, um, I'd love for you to share a little win or a success that you've had or how you're going since the last call, which Sally Ann or the Kearns family are the only ones on who were on the last call. So, um, so let's start with the Kearns family. Would you like to introduce yourselves and then we'll um, the next person can just introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Sally Ann. We have two boys, uh, six at just six and four. Uh, and we are up to um, week five, just in terms of the member vault. And we are still trying to master not losing it. Um, <laughs> basically, well, that's what, yeah. And really trying to be, um more, more mindful is is pro probably yeah still trying to master not losing it i love that <laughs> and ray and nick did you want to say a quick hello yeah yeah hi so i'm ray so i'm on the dad of the two boys of the the six and four year old the two very highly spirited boys look since starting this course we definitely have noticed an improvement no, we're still challenged ourselves because we still haven't gone through all the steps as yet. And that's probably, you know, where we're at ourselves personally, just uh, sort of um, looking forward to those next steps and building that skill set, but certainly have noticed a change in the boys thus far in our relationship with those boys. Perfect. I mean, that that's that's great news. And I love to hear when parents say, you know, they're noticing some difference, whether it be in their relationship, just in the general vibe of the home, or even just in the way that you're feeling yourself about parenting. Have you got any sort of um, win or success that you've had, no matter how small, that you like to share? Well, Nick's probably spending a bit more time with the boys in the last few weeks because uh, he's come over from Germany as our au pair. Um, so, Nick, do you want to add anything to that? Come on, Nick. Give us something good, Nick. Um, I can't think of anything on the spot. Um, yeah, well, definitely the boys, even just their interactions together sometimes is better. They're treating each other with a little bit more respect at mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. um, like this morning, we actually had them unpacking the dishwasher together without, you know, Fighting. fighting and drama and all that type of stuff. They actually worked together as a team, so we made sure that we gave them a bit of bit of praise for that, for the teamwork. It was awesome. uh, really quite sort of nice to see, yeah. Well, I got nurtured hearted actually the other day when I cleaned the house. Nick came back and said, <laughs> he said, he said you've cleaned the house. And it was really good. And, I went, <laughs> and then Alex came and he nurtured hearted me after doing something in the kitchen. And that felt really nice. So I guess watching the kids mirror, yeah. mirror the behaviour means that it must be grasping at a subconscious level so yeah alex, alex pretty yeah he mirrored and he was like gee yeah geez mum you really did a great job on and just the tone in his voice it was like oh, i was saying it to him and i thought yeah, oh that's oh, nice it's, it's happening like it's coming together yeah and being at week five i'm just trying to see where that is have you started um learning this specific recognition yet 
Don't think so, not yet. No, no. so we've just, the only thing that we're kind of uh, clear on, which we are still trying to master, is the absolute no. Yeah. So, yeah. so we haven't even got to stand two yet, which is yes. Um, yeah. absolutely yes. Yeah. And and don't, I guess, don't try and rush that either. You know, just really master the not giving energy, although it's, it sounds like you're, you're sneaking in some, some good recognitions as well. So, you know, if you just do that, naturally as well but you will learn some more specific recognitions but you already know enough to know that what stand to is and you can start getting some recognitions especially in those moments where the boys are showing behaviors that they may not have in the past and it's almost like we need to have ears and eyes you know all around <laughs> and we need to be looking for every single opportunity and even doing some um um Hijacking, you know, hijacking them to success, <laughs> Nelly. So, thank you for sharing, Kearns. Uh, much appreciated. Gina, would you like to share next, love? Sure. Hello, everyone. My name's Jenna Kenny, and I completed Nurture, Nurtured Heart. When was that? Last year, mm, mid last right. year, maybe mid. Yeah, early last year, because you didn't do you didn't do the twenty four week course. You did the one prior, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That would have been earlier last year. Mm. Yes, and I guess I'm a testament to uh, practice makes perfect because even as a counsellor, I was actually talking to Lillian the other day, there's still times that I find, you know, with certain situations, I had one recently where it kind of popped up, but um, with certain situations, literally my brain stopped working <laughs> and I stopped practising what I, you know, what I know to be true and, um, you know, giving attention to the negative rather than focusing on the positive and helping that grow. Um, so, yeah, so that's where I am. Sorry, Lillian, what was the other questions? I was madly trying to make dinner tonight and get on the call and I didn't do a very good job. I was kind of racing to get here and then, the, then it, we couldn't make the computer work. That's okay. Just introducing who you are, where you're at with, with Nurtured Heart. So you completed a, a course, you're still, you know, ne leaking some negativity sometimes and, and forgetting the dance. Um, yeah. So coming back in for a bit of a bit of rejuvenation and and helping. Yeah, and I think yeah, yeah. Just I mean, I can't stress enough. I think the importance of the program is really just practicing it. It's it's like it's like learning the alphabet. You know, when we learn the alphabet, we kind of we learn and all learning to drive. Let's just say we learn to drive and we learn to drive so well we don't have to think about it anymore. It's just automatic. And every single time I talk to you, Lillian, um, I am reminded of how. Um, how autopilot the responses are and I don't mean they sound autopilot but like it's just the way Lillian does things it's the way that her family does things it's the way that they operate and so remembering to revisit that and kind of um, coveting that a lot do you know what I mean and going back to the reference material I think is also really important it's just fabulous how you open it up and keep it open and I'm so super grateful for that because I still get caught <laughs> It's it, and thank you for your transparency around that because we do have to keep practicing those dance steps per se, and and basically have the three stands in our mind. You know, not it will get to the point where you're not thinking, oh, stand two or stand one or stand three. It will just flow. It will just be natural where you're like, okay, I need to be in stand one. I'm not giving that energy. Okay, I need to reset, reset you know, and, you know, or get clarity or now I need to go into stand two. I need to give recognition and acknowledgement. It will just be like you won't, it won't be mechanical. It will just flow uh, yes. in time. But it does take practice. And as I use the analogy of learning a new language, you know, learning a new dance, it takes practice, practicing the steps until they're fluent and then you just know that dance, you know, and, and that's really what we need to do. So thank you, Jenna, for sharing. Um, Kirsty. Um, I just met uh, on Zoom today and Kirsty has um, come along from an invitation from Jenna. So, Kirsty, would you, um, if you're comfortable, um, say hello and introduce yourself and why you're here and what whatever you'd like to tell us about your family. Hi, I'm Kirsty. Um, I have a 14-year-old on the spectrum and we have good days and we have a few challenging ones. Awesome. And what would you like to gain out of joining us in this beautiful adventure? Uh, I think probably a the most 
stable um, days where they're, they're more good rather than um, the challenging ones. More so. So more good days than challenging one. What about great days every day? How does that sound? Yeah, that sounds <laughs> You know what? I'm putting myself back like you're in your shoes now having um, your, your beautiful boy who's just about to turn 14. When our younger son was that age, OMG, I was stressed to the max. All of our relationships were stressed to the max. All of our interrelated relationships, my relationship with my younger son, my relationship with my husband, my relationship with Nathan, who, who you'll be um, chatting with shortly, all of our interconnected, the two boys' relationships with each other, everybody's relationships were all strained and stressed because of the challenges that we were going through, particularly in those years between about 13 and 15. So I'm so glad, Kirsty, that you've found us um, because we are going to change the trajectory of where your family is going and how you are going to relationship moving forward. So super happy for you to be here. Um, thank you. And whilst uh, a couple more people are introducing themselves. Remember, Nathan's going to be here, or he is here, and he's going to be here to answer um, any uh, health and wellness questions, and then we'll finish off with any nurtured heart questions um, more towards the end. So, Penny, would you like to introduce yourself? So, Penny is familiar with the nurtured heart approach somewhat, but she hasn't dove kind of right into it, but she's she's here to learn, and, it, and to, it's to help her in her family and in her work life, I believe. So share away, Penny. Yes, thank you very much, Lillian. Um, so yeah, back in 2021, I was um, lucky enough to be part of the, it was a nine week course that you did. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm working through, I'm working through the recordings actually to kind of remind myself. So at the moment I've just, <laughs> I'm really trying to just focus on absolutely no, which is so hard because like I work as a therapist and a mental health nurse and I find that working with people that, you know, don't have a, that personal family relationship with you, it's very different. Um, I do find that my brain gets very hijacked, you know, like in those family relationships, it gets so heated. We have these expectations about how children are supposed to speak to us and what it was like when we were growing up. So mm -hmm. um, the reason I'm here is because I have um, a 13 year old who's just been diagnosed as on the spectrum. Um, and and but but predominantly, I guess, really the focus of um, all the heat with bad behavior in our house is my son, who's nine, very, very, very high energy child, probably ticks all the boxes for ADHD, isn't medicated, does a lot of sport, but really doesn't handle his anger well at all. We used to have holes in every single wall. Um, you know, he doesn't do that anymore. We've come a long way. But uh, he's just had a massive meltdown tonight, actually, and just thrown stuff all around the kitchen. I didn't know if I'd get here tonight. He's put it all back. And he's now quite calmly watching a bit of telly. So if I duck out, then that's why. And I, I haven't got my husband here tonight. He's collecting granddad from hospital. So um, if I go, forgive me for being rude. Um, it's just a bit of a hectic night tonight. But I'm very excited to be here. Thank you very much. Um, um, I've had a lot of support from, from Lillian, um, which has been really, really so helpful. And it is very, very helpful in work as well as home life. So thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Penny. Um, once again, I'm excited for you as well. Like, you know, the fundamentals already. So it's just a matter of getting in and really learning that dance. Like we, we could hot seat your situation later if we've got time about what happened tonight with your son. So um, remind me about that. And um, thank you. Think, uh, thanks. Thanks, Penny. And Zanelli, our beautiful friend from New Zealand, who's getting on quite late. So she's two hours or three hours. What time is it in New Zealand, Zanelli? It's 10 to 11. So you're getting on at 10.50 p.m. Let's really congratulate her for that. I mean, that's amazing. Thank you for jumping on, Zanelli, and please share about your beautiful family. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, I was in Jenna's group. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm Zanelli Mavuso. I live in New Zealand, been here. Now, uh, my husband is here. Hi, say hi. Hey, Ernest. 
Hi, how you <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. He's, he's dozing off to sleep. He's had a long day. Yes, so I have three children, 20, 17, just in 17, and uh, 14. Wow, they're growing up. Two girls and the youngest is a boy. Yeah, so I would say I have been very blessed to, we are starting learning some of these lessons very early. And then even then when I did the natural heart, it just, um, I think, changed just my mindset a lot. And I think what I would like to share is that we just had a trip to Swaziland. So that's where we came from. Uh, in 2005 to New Zealand and we haven't been there for seven years all of us together we were just traveling maybe one or two in between from that time so for seven years like the two girls hadn't been there since 2015 so we really didn't know what to expect and stuff and how they would behave and everything you know a little bit of an anxiety but didn't really be like, oh, please make sure you do this and this, you know, no, no coaching, nothing. And we've had just the most fabulous holiday. The kids were good. They were so helpful. Everyone was kind of like, wow, okay. Uh, I don't know if you have any experience with migrants, you know, there's always a bit of, you know, expectation of, oh, yeah, you know, they live in the city life, so maybe spoiled kids or what, you know, not wanting to associate with others, you know, in the village, all those things. Now, we we didn't have any issues at all. Uh, so, yeah, and uh, as I say, you know, having the nurtured heart is just cemented a lot of other things that I had learned, but having known how to navigate mm -hmm. especially my youngest my son uh, when he turned 13 and it was COVID times he was just a different guy altogether grants grants no talking nothing um but we I don't know we survived <laughs> through that because there was no not much interaction from outside uh, then he just turned around when we went on a holiday. We started seeing smiles, like, wow, okay. He had stopped even doing Instagram, you know, posting things, and then he started again. So, yeah, it's like for those who still have younger kids, yeah, it does get better sometimes. <laughs> and I think, I think, Sonali, if you were consciously doing your Nurtured Heart dance, you would have had a lot of opportunities then to acknowledge him for I love you know I love how you are interacting with the family and communicating with us and being present in this moment this really shows us that you you know you are a, a valued you know family member and you love your family and you and you love spending time and I, and I really appreciate that you could be on Instagram and you could be doing this but you're not you're really connected with the family and you know I appreciate that so rather than just taking for granted that mm. he's not on Instagram he's with the family but to actually acknowledge him for that because you want him to know how much you appreciate the fact that he's hanging with the family and not on Instagram. So we need to recognise him and tell him what that means about him as a person um, and how much you appreciate it. So every opportunity, that's what I love about the Nurtured Heart is that the more you know, familiar you get with this dance, then the recognitions and acknowledgements will just flow a lot easier and a lot and and you will use every opportunity because we're using words anyway right why yeah. not use words of encouragement words that are building people up words that are um, putting positive things into their uh, inner wealth into their portfolio because we're saying stuff all the time but the things that we say make a huge difference and impact to to everything you know to, to all yeah. of everything all of our relationships the way we feel about each other our connection 
you know, I, I know that everybody on this call's goal is to be super connected, you know, with their children and with their family and with each other. And that's what Nurtured Heart is all about. So I want to allow Nathan some time. We'll come back to any Nurtured Heart questions after um, we have uh, had Nathan share. So I think everybody here, I don't think Penny's met Nathan, I'm not sure, and Kirsty definitely wouldn't have. So Nathan, perhaps you could introduce yourself. Um, and I know some people have been going through some of Nathan's modules in the um, in the vault as well, which I need to check some of them, Nathan, because Sally Ann said some of them are, are not working. Um, but please um, be ready to unmute with a question for Nathan. Anything around physical or emotional health and well-being, you know, to do with this holistic um idea of you know relationshiping and parenting looking at the nurtured heart approach but looking at the physiology and the emotional and you know physical everything you know interconnected so nathan you perhaps just introduce yourself and then everybody else on the call um have a really good question to ask nathan well it all started because of a i guess a specific family member um whatever the universe's reason pushed me into health and it gave me a very good reason to uh, make sure that I was helping people and getting similar results as to the practitioners that helped my brother. I saw the dramatic changes that our family went through um, when he went and saw various practitioners. And between that and what my parents were doing, uh, holding seminars and, and teaching uh, families what they had learned through their own journey, uh, that really inspired me to also want to pursue that. So, you know, after uni I went, typical overachiever, did three degrees and, and every summer in winter school, six subjects a semester, I got it done though. Um, was very fortunate that as I was finishing the last two degrees off, I met a very well-known holistic doctor that asked me to come work for her. She mentored me and I worked worked with that clinic now for 15 years. So really um, blessed to be in a clinic that has chiropractors and psychiat uh, psychologists and kinesiologists and holistic doctors and other naturopaths. So it's been a really good foundation to see such a wide variety of patients uh, and very complex cases and get to learn a lot more than what I actually got taught in uni. Um, and the doctor that I work with, she was so holistic and she so strongly believed in like psychological and spiritual and vibrational health that she said most things you're going to find, Ethan, that it comes from childhood, that yes, they're presenting right now in front of you with some disease, but if you can trace back the steps that led them to that point in their life as they got older, it all came from childhood. So if someone asked me the question, how would you help someone? I'll be like, I'm going to try and if I was, to, if I could manipulate time, it would be I would help them when they were a child, because as an adult, uh, you, you're basically having uh, almost a whole lifelong exposure to different toxins and uh, physical accumulations of things, um, but that is not as significant as the emotional and mental aspect that comes from childhood. So yeah, my background was very scientific and left-brained and. I love the nutrition and the biochemistry aspect and everything had to be peer-reviewed and researched and everything I prescribed um, was backed up by science. But I, I learned probably halfway through that um, I had to start looking at the emotional. So now I'm heavily into that and I love um, books like uh, from Dr. Joe Spenza and Dr. Bradley Nelson. Um, and um, there's a really good video or, or movie, I should say, um, that, you know, where they even did experiments on um, the brain and going back and removing trauma using um, some like alternative therapies and how that changed someone's perspective of their current life situation. I'm not sure if anyone here has themselves, you know, been stuck in a rut or um, been in the position where they just can't get over something, they keep bringing it back up. That translocates to those around you and and your children if you're you know i've seen uh, anxious parents have anxious children um and it's yes there is some biochemical and functional aspects to that but it's so good to see you all on here teaching each other and learning 
what it means to be, you know, uh, have a better relationship because not only is that going to be good for your children, it's going to be better for you. And when that's better for you and when you change and you change your perspective and the glass is half half, uh, full, not half empty, that eventually rubs off onto your children as well. Um, So it's going to be an interesting journey uh, having you go through and do this, especially then when you combine that with some of the the functional health tips and things like that that I've put into those modules. So that that's a bit of an intro and sort of a my journey through uh, medicine and health as to where I'm at now. So just for unmute anybody and ask Nathan anything. I had a quick question, Nathan, if that's okay. Yes, yeah, sure. How often, I don't know, but how often, I know that um, our little spectrum kids um, can be hypersensitive. I know, you know, we are anyway, but how often do you think you should try and detox heavy metals? Heavy metals is one of those things, Jenna, that when you are pregnant, 80% of toxins will pass through the placenta into the child. Mm. They're actually born quite toxic at work We have, at the clinic. Uh, we have a machine called the Ligio scan, which is like the new technology to detect heavy metals and mineral deficiencies and vitamin deficiencies in people. And I commonly see things like aluminium, al- arsenic, cadmium, and mercury, mm. uh, and sometimes lead. And especially the lead has been shown to be associated with behavioral problems and aggression. With removing the heavy metals, it's not so simple as just simply jumping in and going straight to removing the heavy metal. Often they are stored in the brain, uh, in tissues and in the bone. Uh, And although the body tries to do it safely and use fat and tissue as a, like a safety container, so it's not roaming around the body in circulation, they do have very slow leaks and it does affect us. But when you go to remove them, you're removing something very volatile and dangerous that if the liver and kidneys can't metabolize it, bind it to bile and get it through the stool or excrete it through the urine, then it has a risk of going into circulation and affecting other organs. So there is a bit of a process of, of removing heavy metals. First, I like to make sure that the elimination pathways of the body, so things like the gut, the spleen, the kidneys, the lymphatics and the liver, they are all working properly because if they're not working on a daily basis to remove what general metabolic waste that we're creating or what we're putting on our skin or eating through our food or breathing in through the air, if we can't even get rid of that and our body is a little bit congested with just those toxins, there's no way that when we remove it, we take a fat-soluble um, heavy metal and bring it into a water-soluble form that our body's going to get it out without it contaminating something else. So for me, the first step is correcting all of those other, um, helping all those other organs with the elimination. And once I know that a general detox is being done, that those organs are functioning a lot, um, I guess, a lot freer of general waste, then it's a, a, okay, next step. What can we do to block heavy metals from, escaping their fat container as they're being excreted and we call that nutrient antagonist therapy so essentially what are the nutrients that compete with heavy metals so if you've got lead for example we need lots of iron and often if a child has high iron and and low sorry low iron and high lead this is where they're more likely to be super um you know not always aggressive but just like very rough or quick to anger Uh, that is a common thing. So we bump up the iron. uh, So then when we pull out the lead, the iron has um, more ability to protect our cells. Because imagine if there's a cell with a door on it, each door has a different shape for a different nutrient or toxin or heavy metal. And iron shares the same door, I guess you can say, with the lead. So if there's more iron, it's filling up more of these doors for the iron and therefore the lead can't get in. And it's the same with like mercury and cadmium and arsenic. That if you need things like selenium, um, zinc, manganese, uh, and silica to sort of like fill up these um, doors, the receptors, and 
I find, unfortunately, they're usually quite low, especially silica um, and zinc. Okay. So, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a process. But once you've done that, then you can start to remove the heavy metals more safely. And there's a variety of different chelation agents, um, some as base through food like coriander, or cilantro, um, corella. Um, you use things like clay and zeolites. Um, and then with the practitioner's supervision, start using some of the chelators like EDTA and DMPS and DMSA, things like that. So is there like a, um, can, because it sounds it sounds like it's more complicated than what I really anticipated it kind of would be. I just, years, many years ago, we did a detox. I did a detox for uh, Keelan, but I'd like to do it because um, I've got Molly as well with me now um, for both. So is it best to just like book in and come and see you? Because that sounds like it's way too involved um, to be able to measure and test and all that kind of stuff. Like, What's the best the thing is that Oligio that scan. You just start doing that Oligio scan so you can see what heavy metals you have, uh -huh. what minerals you're low in. You can then just start working on taking the minerals that you're low in. You're going to feel so much better because obviously those minerals aren't just there to try and stop the heavy metals entering the cells. They're there for so many other functions. Um, and if you're low in iron uh, and iodine, for example, there's the whole cognition. So when it comes to like attention span, sitting there, memory concentration, you're going to need those two. Uh, and so you'll see an increase in, in those two functions just by the in increasing those two nutrients. Uh, and same with the masterclass when I was talking about the whole methylation and the pyrrol disorder, they need the zinc and the B6 and the magnesium. Uh, and so when you bump those up, all of a sudden, the way your brain is signaling, calming everything down, sorting out the information, um, it has those nutrients to do that properly. Uh, and then if you do have pyrrole disorder, um, and just pop in the chat if you don't know what that is, I'll explain it. Um, if you do have pyrrole disorder and you're losing excessive amounts of zinc and B6 and, and magnesium and essential fatty acids, uh, then that's obviously going to be improved when you start bumping those things up as well. So generally heavy metals I sort of leave till you've done some of the other, the other functional foundational work. Okay. Uh, but if you're ready, where the start is that Oligio scan, it's a good it's a good um, benchmark so you can see exactly what needs to be done. Okay. And can I just ask one more really quick question? Sorry, that wasn't, I know that wasn't quick. Is that okay, everyone, if I just ask one more question? Yeah, um, So auditory processing disorder, um, short-term memory, fish oils, I understand. But is there anything else that I can be doing right now? It's just becoming quite a... Uh, Killen's becoming quite hyper focused on that issue and the short term memory. Like, you know, it's always this way when we start school back up again, you know, and we've learned a whole bunch of different things. And then all of a sudden, they've literally just washed away. And the frustration that he's feeling right now is really, really, really heightened. And it, you know, kind of breaks my heart because I don't know what else I should or could be doing to help him with that i mean we're looking at jim quick we're looking you know he's just reading limitless at the moment trying to learn about some different tactics and things like that mental attitude you know trying to work on focus you know and how to better focus and, and focus his energy and his attention and then do different things like taking breaks you know to come back in making sure that the environment's quiet so he doesn't have any distractions when he's doing work and doing sprints so that he you know he can literally focused but it's such an issue right now and it's really getting him down the biggest thing is nurtured harding himself yeah um, so making sure that when he does have a little bit of a dip and, and not so much of a win it's well is that what he wants to focus on or does he want to focus on the times where he has been able to remember and he has been able to have a win because if there's an emotional attachment to the time where he has a feeling the short-term memory is going to cause X, Y, Z, then all it takes is his brain to see a similar circumstance that reminded him when that happened last, he's more likely to do it again. So he, he just wants to cut any kind of connection that, oh, this environment last time, I couldn't do it. I forgot all about what this, you know, whatever the situation might be. And that will just flood his body with the trauma from last time. Mm. So it's all about re-changing the perspective of that trauma 
um, and just bombarding his his subconscious with what he wants to focus on instead. All of the times he did do something well, focus on that. If you do that, then we have time to go back and fix the whole acetylcholine pathway, which is a short-term memory pathway, and incorporate things like choline, different forms of phospholipids. Um, uh, And then obviously sleep is a huge important area of short-term memory because that's when you're storing the memories while you're sleeping. Interestingly, the best way to remember things is by something called hormetic response. It's a little bit of trauma, not in a way of bad trauma, like something really negative happened to you, but like a state of adrenaline. So they've done studies where if you've learned something the whole day and then you throw your body into a bit of a hormetic response, shock, it could be like a really cold shower or like just a sudden increase in in, um, heart rate through just doing like a fast-paced exercise on the spot or something like that. The, the brain, for whatever reason, because of this hormetic response, by the way, is like when you go to the gym, you do a bit of a workout, you cause some damage, you grow muscles. That's hormetic response. Yes, it was damage, but the end result was better. So that's what we want to do with this um, trauma response. The adrenaline response after learning something is like, a, you know, something to shock the body. Very cold shower, quick exercise. Um, and if you incorporate that with really good sleep, and throw in those nutritionals. You, you've got you're on, you're on the money with the fish oil. Um, you just want all. If you go look up acetylcholine pathway and look at all the. Sorry, things, say that. Just say that slowly. What's it called? Acetylcholine. I'll type it in the chat. I will look that up. Thank you. That, you're amazing. Thanks, honey. Sorry, it's okay, honey. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a time of endearment and i just thought you know i always think of you kindly <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah so there's there's some quick things that you can do uh oh, by the way um mushroom extracts amazing for memory concentration focus Lions- oh, I've just i've just started to put mushrooms back into our smoothies in the morning like and i'm loading them up because i can remember um when i used to do it with mum before mum passed away and then for some reason I got out of the practice and I just found the pamphlet the other a few weeks ago and ordered some before we moved. So I've got I've got a whole heap and I'm piling mushrooms. Yeah. You want the highest grade you can get, like the the that uh adapt me formula that I've made up, it contains 30% polysaccharides. So when you have a mushroom extract, you know, someone can just get lion's mane as a mushroom, dry it put it into a capsule or put it into a bag of powdered mushroom and just sell it. Uh, another company may refine that and remove all the non-essential stuff and they will sell it as a 10 to 1, meaning for every 10 kilos of mushroom, they've removed 9 kilos of non-essential stuff and left you with like a, a kilo of concentrate. And then as a step further, they then test that concentrate and look at well, how much of that is actual polysaccharides that's doing the work that's increasing the brain-derived nootropic factor or nerve regrowth factor. And then that comes in like 10, 20, 30% polysaccharides. Um, so I use 30%. It's like the, the best of the best. Which uh, one of your products has all the mushrooms in it, Nathan? The Adapt Me. And yep, that, I use that for focus, attention, coffee replacement, stress, um, just to like keep charging through the day. Um, but it also helps you adapt to stress. So it's not going to be like a coffee where you're feeling jittery, racing heart rate, dry mouth or anything like that. It's not a stimulant. I might have to get some more of that one. Yeah. Yeah. Is it .com or .com .au, Nathan? Uh, .com. You've got it correct there. Yeah. Um, yeah mo- most of his products are on there now. I'm taking so many of Nathan's products. I'm just firing on all cylinders. I'm just taking it all. I just make a huge big smoothie every day with about six different of Nathan's products. I just take everything. And when he gets a new one, I go, do I need that one? Can I take that one too? So I've got them all set out in little containers now with labels and I've got it all set out so I can just spoon it out easily out of the containers and I make a, a, a really nutritious shake. Um, every morning and then at night I just take a couple of them so I don't have as many at night Um, but yeah I love them but yeah I wasn't sure I knew one of your products had all the mushrooms but I wasn't sure which one it was 
Yeah. Thank you so much. I will jump on and get some more of that little bad boy because that is fantastic. I'll just um, I'll use up what we've got and I'll jump on probably tomorrow and just get some more. I, I completely forgot that you had the mushroom blend. Totally forgot. Thank you. I'm so glad I jumped on. Yeah, you're welcome. Awesome. Thank you, Gina. And I think your questions were, would you all agree they were beneficial for us all to hear those answers and, and what Nathan shared? Um, so Kirsty or Sally Ann or Penny, uh, Zanelli, do, do any of you have okay. any questions for Nathan? Yes, Sally Ann. Yeah, so um, we we uh, tested for both Ray and I tested for MTFHR in the genetic test. We haven't had the kids done, but the fact that we're MTFHR probably means that both of the children are. Yeah. Um, and I would almost suspect based on my history with my health I would be um I'd have pyroles so apart from testing like just with you know I just just assuming that I test and I was to get that result and I was to understand apart from the b6 the magnesium and the zinc what other strategies would you say could be supportive for that methylation pathway um good question Sally so it depends if you're an over or an under methylator the MTFHR gene, I don't know if you remember if you had the C677 or the A17 um, okay. mutation, and sometimes you have a heterozygous or a homozygous, meaning it's a hetera from one parent, that gene had a mutation, but the other one was fine. If it's a homozygous, it means from both parents there was a mutation, and the C677 is the more dominant um, MTFHR, MTFHR gene. But it's just one of the things like five or six of them in the methylation pathway. Uh, and its main function is to help you take things like uh, folic acid from grain leafy vegetables um, mm. and turn it into the activated, the 5 tetrahydrofolinic form. Um, but the, you, but that doesn't mean that you're going to have, you're going to be a bad methylator if you have that gene. It just means you have the potential because you're not as efficient at getting the conversion of the folic acid into the first part of the cycle. Your rest of the cycle might be perfect. So a better indication is doing a homocysteine and histamine blood test because yeah. that tells you as of right now, whatever you've been doing previously, how are you methylating today? Yeah. Not what your potential is from your genes. What is it right now? Um, and doing a histamine will give you an indication of if you're an over or under methylator. Um, you can also use the zinc and seroplasmin and copper um, to sort of back up that reading. Uh, so you can see a correlation if you have a zinc, um, a zinc, copper, seroplasmin, histamine, homocysteine, and B12. Um, if funds don't permit that, I would just go with the histamine. Uh, and then at least you know if you're under or over. Uh, but the if you are, uh, luckily for methylation, there's a few where they overlap some of the, the nutrients. Yep. So I'll just bring up. Um, and Nathan actually has formulas. They won't be on his website because they're more sort of practitioner ones. Yeah, they're prescribed. Prescribed ones, but he's got the under methylation formula and an over methylation formula. Well, I know when I started with, um, with because I am a nutritionist, so we do eat all organic. There's no chemicals in the house. We've got EMF on timers. Like, you know, we've done all that, and that's what drove me to being a nutritionist, a functional nutritionist, is more the my own health and then watching that of my children. But I'm just definitely noticing, particularly with our eldest, there are some characteristics. And so we're about to start doing um, naturopathy emotional release because my business partner is a naturopath and a herbalist. So she's going to do some of the emotional work with him, which I've responded really well to. But I guess I'm just looking at it going, there's still this clinical picture of frustration. And, and I know how I felt when I wasn't methylating properly. So I found the sulforaphane really powerful, the broccoli yeah. sprout. But, yeah, that's good. The, the, but the, yeah, I guess the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, but I'm, I guess without actually doing the testing for him. So it's a blood test and you'd say the homocysteine, the histamine, the zinc, the seroplasmum and the copper and the B12 will kind of give us a bit of a clinical picture about how we could support him nutritionally. Exactly. Yeah. It'll tell you not only if it's an over or under methylator, 
It'll yeah. also tell you, because if you, sometimes typically a undermethylator will have high homocysteine and an undermethylator low. Um, but I don't, when you do test it, it doesn't always correlate. And so that's why I add those on there. So for mm -hmm. example, an undermethylator along with the, what did you say you're currently doing? B6 zinc? Well, we're not. I mean, yeah. we're not. We're not for my six-year-old. No. Okay, so typically for an undermethylator, you would use things like trimethylglycine, which is a, a methyl donator. Yeah. Um, uh, and that works even better if you happen to be an overmethylator with a high homocysteine level, because it means you're not converting the homocysteine to methionine. Yeah. Uh, so you need that additional methyl group. Yeah. Uh, biotin is really important, um, along with the B6, vitamin E, uh, zinc, magnesium. When I say B6, you need both the regular form, so the pyridoxine, but also the activated form, the P5P. Okay. Uh, and when you combine all those together, probably I would do that for at least eight weeks and then recheck the bloods. Um, and then if you, the reason why you do B12 as well because if B12 is low, you need to add that in too. Yeah. Uh, B12 is actually, if, you, if you're if you an undermethylator, you're better off using the methylcobalamin, um, but it's quite a weak um, methyl donor, but you still need the B12 to help with the homocysteine. Okay. Uh, for, for, that's about 22% of the population. For the other 8% who are overmethylators, um, Again, the, the zinc, the B6, the vitamin E, uh, vitamin C um, are all also used. But if their um, homocysteine is elevated, they even though they you're trying to slow down methylation, they do benefit from a little bit of trimethylglycine. But you also need a lot of the folic acid to, to slow down the first part of the methylation cycle. So would that be beef liver in like food form? What would would it be beef liver in food form? But then that would be high histamine, wouldn't it? So you're better off just using the the supplement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nathan uh, has formulated those very specifically, haven't yeah. you, Nathan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. in the, the overmethylator one, there's also the N-acetylcysteine, choline, to to try and shift the homocysteine down the glutathione pathway instead of the the continuing on the methyl. Um, acetylcholine pathway which is already running too fast okay got it and so behaviorally would they both present the same like in terms of over or under or it would be completely different different typically this, this is why you test because sometimes yeah. the body is overcompensating and swinging them into something unnatural so they're like mm -hmm. they should be an over methylator but they're showing up as a under because their body is overcompensating but typically an overmethylator you can kind of always pick them they just will not sit still the leg is jumping around they just can't sit through a movie they just can't um just slow down have a nice conversation their eyes are darting around they talk a million miles you can tell the mind's going even faster uh, and they're just all over the place they'll jump from one story to the next um, that's a typical overmethylator yeah, it uh, sounds like Alex is an overmethylator. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. All right. An, so an undermethylator is just like most of the others who is just like sometimes unmotivated, can get depressed easy, can get anxious easy, always worried, um, can't think properly. Probably me. Yeah, right. <laughs> but the funny thing is, Nathan, if you had just explained those two, I would have seen myself as the over-methylator, but I test it as an under. Oh, right. Okay. But you're not really. But you do a lot of things, but you can sit down and paint for like hours on end or you can sit down and, and watch a documentary um, or you can sit down and read a book and relax. Like an over-methylator, they literally could not do that. That's yeah, so maybe actually because he can sit down and he can play Lego and he can get immersed in activities for sometimes hours. So mm -hmm. we might make I guess unless you do the testing, and that, I don't do functional testing because it's not part of my scope, but I um I appreciate it because it's given me a lot of answers in my own healing that I perhaps wouldn't have got answers to otherwise. So, yeah. cool. So, you know what? No, sometimes you, the, the patient doesn't follow the rules 
Um, they are their own person. They have different things driving their symptoms, not just methylation. So it can get a bit confusing. You can't just go off symptoms. Um, and so that's why you test. You just simply don't know. Yeah. yeah. Ace to test. You want to get it right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, ultimately we're all here to kind of have have the wins, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, it means that that's part of the part of the clinical picture and then we can support him not only at, at, whilst he's six but at times of stress mm. going into the future. And so from your clinical experience, Nathan, do you find that it once you discover and you do the testing and you can identify if we're over or under methylating, is that sort of like a, a nutritional profile or supplement profile that you would have in forever and always? No, I would say for at least two to six months. Yep. Um, to correct it, and some of them can get worse in the first two months. Um, but usually if you can balance the gut out and everything else out before you jump into trying to deal with methylation, the the two-month turbulence is far less and sometimes doesn't happen at all. Okay. Um, but then at the six-month mark, it, it, it's basically if you then go back to the genes and do the gene tests and you see there's quite a few Compton, CBR and mtrr and mtfhr and if you got quite a lot of um, mutations in those then you're probably going to need to stay on like a activated b supplement a zinc um, and just like do that just do those base base ones yeah Um, but if your genes are pretty good and it just was circumstance that you know for x years you know there's other issues going on and your body just fell in a hole and it lost control of methylation, then you can pretty much like just make sure your diet is healthy and look at what foods contain those nutrients and maybe just like every so often go through a bottle of, you know, B12 or um, B6 or zinc, Um, especially if you have like heavy metals blocking your zinc, you're going to have to do it for much longer. But if everything else is perfect and, and you got your results perfect, then you don't have to stay on it lifelong. It's just, it's all depending on your environment and how good your sleep is. If you've got a stressful job or if if, you, if the kids are stressed at school, it's if you lived in a perfect world, you could just do it through the diet. And unfortunately, we don't. So we have to adjust depending on what the circumstance is. So Sally Ann, you have a consult with Nathan as a part of um, the rolling course that you've purchased. So maybe you could get the testing done and then have a consult with Nathan afterwards. Yeah. Uh, Kirsty, you will also have a consult with Nathan as a part of the course once we get that all sorted for you as well. So Kirsty, did you have any health questions for Nathan at this stage? Um, I did actually. Um, my son, ever since uh, he was uh, probably two, I don't know whether it was because of trauma, um, but he's always had difficulty going to sleep. Um, so early on I was um, prescribed uh, Finergan, which then turned on him and then I'd have this hypo child till midnight, 1 a.m., mm-hmm. um, and then, like, I tried all the natural things like oils, um, warm baths, you know, um, following, like, the protocols for bed. Um, that still didn't work. Um, I ended up having to lie in bed with him every night, trust trying to get him to sleep. Um, and he had to be holding on to me to go to sleep, and half the time I'd just fall asleep in his bed. Um And then, but if I tried moving, if I got up, then he would wake up and would start the whole process again. Um, Mm -hmm. Now we're on like a natural melatonin, um, the one milligram. Um, If he doesn't have it, he's still awake till 10, 30, 11 at night. And then there's like a switch that goes off and he just changes into a, a child that I don't know. And it's, yeah, so it's just really, like, it's been, like, 12 years of the sleep pattern, um, and he just doesn't seem to be able to go to sleep at a, 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 a like, a decent hour. Mm-hmm. And if he goes away, 
uh, if we go somewhere new, um, I think it's the anxiety and like if he, he's been kicked out of um, scout camps because he just gets up to no good and doing really silly stuff in the middle of the night rather than sleeping. Mm. So what I would recommend at that point is a couple of things. Um, if it is trauma-based, using a good kinesiologist to try and trace back at what point did something or a few things happen that is yeah we just saw a kinesiologist today actually i did but yeah we see them yeah often so we've done uh the richard's trauma process um lots of kinesiologists we've been like outside further um with shamans and different things as well lots of um sound therapy yeah lots of different things but the sleep thing's still ongoing yeah. Um, if kinesiology is not working for you or if you just haven't fi- found the right kinesiologist, I do work with a really good one. Um, then at the same time, from my perspective, like my my area of expertise, um, I would be using things like um, GABA, uh, theanine, magnesium, lavender, passion flower, um, and then I'm not sure how old your son is, but then combining that with CBD. Um, to really try and relax the whole nervous system. Um, I found gather. that lavender actually has had the negative effect on him. Was that used in isolation or with something else? No, in isolation. Yeah, the there is always a synergistic effect with herbs and sometimes from a Ayurvedic perspective, like um, valerian is often used for sleep but can do the opposite in some people yeah. because it's too warming for them. So it actually keeps them up. Um, that's why so I I use lavender, but it's always in combination with theanine, which is very calming and cooling. So just in case that person has that warming constitution, and my knowledge is not the best on Ayurvedic principles, um, but that's from what I've been reading, why that is with things like lavender and valerian, where they can have the opposite effect. They, they need to be in a complex with other herbs that are counteracting some of those things. Um, I, I I just want to share a quick testimony. Sorry, Nathan. On And I, I sound like I'm promoting all of Nathan's products, but I love them so much. Nathan has a sleep blend, a sleep and stress blend, and I don't take it during the day because I'm not stressed, but I chal- I have challenges getting to sleep and staying asleep and I have vivid dreams, etc. I take that about... Uh, 30 to 60 minutes before I go to bed, just a teaspoon of it, and I take a couple of other little things that Nathan um, has me put in there, and it makes a difference. And the nights where I forget it, I notice I toss and turn and I can't get to sleep. Um, And so has that blend got all of that stuff in that you were talking about, Nathan? doesn't have CBD but has the rest of them in there. Okay. So I might need to combine CBD in as well just to really max that out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I have a great CBD connection if anyone needs one. <laughs> yeah, CBD, CBD is great. Um, a lot of the there's a lot of synergistic effects with theanine and magnesium, lavender and passion flower. Those four ingredients just make the anandamine receptors, which is controlling your CB1 receptor, work a lot better. So our brains naturally contain receptors. So if any of those are not really familiar with CBD, it's not um, like typical cannabis, THC, going to get you high or anything like that. Um, CBD is found in fruit and vegetables. It just so happens that it, the highest concentration of it comes from hemp. Uh, and uh, the they extract the CBD from the hemp uh, and then they put it in different sorts of delivery oils and suppositories and nasal sprays or whatever um, and they combine that with different terpenes and um, our brain has cb1 cb2 receptors literally waiting for these terpenes and cannabinoids as a way to calm down the whole nervous system and you can actually it's called the the cannabinoid um, system cbs Um, you can have a deficiency in these. So when there is a heightened response, when there is a stress response, the the cannabinoids should be derived from fruit and veggies uh, and hemp, filling those receptors, basically switching off the stress response. 
if you're deficient in them, the stress response is just ongoing. There's no stop button. And uh, that's the great, that's basically what CB does. Comes in there, binds onto receptors and says, oh, the stress, let's switch that off. Mm. And that's what it does. Awesome, Nathan. I'm happy to continue. We normally make these sessions an hour, but I think we're getting so much good stuff from Nathan and we probably won't have time to talk too much Nurtured Heart because really Nathan's giving us so much tonight. Um, so Nathan doesn't have much more time. He's got to go. But Penny and um, or Zanelli, did you have a question for Nathan? Yes, I do, Lillian. Um, so I met with Nathan um, probably back in 2021, I think. Um, I had a, a consult then. Um, and and I remember we talked about the methylation, the pyrrole, and I had the, the details to do the blood tests. But uh, with Sam, I, I, I don't know how I would ever get blood out of him, actually. Um, I took lots of notes when I met with Nathan as well and then there was lots of suggestions that he had made as well so I would need to go back and look at those I guess really at the time um, I was feeling very overwhelmed I work full-time I study you know I leave the house at six in the morning I don't get home until late you know like so um, at this stage I'm working part-time I have a bit more time on my hands but from the point of view of somebody that's quite overwhelmed and I don't know how I'd get blood out of my son <laughs> What would be what would be the most um, helpful supplement that I might be able to buy um, from you, Nathan? Um, that would would help a kid that really struggles to hold on to his anger, and he also struggles to go to sleep alone. Um, the, the, yeah. Yeah. Go on. Sorry. Those are the two kind of big things really I guess is is being able to kind of like hang on to his anger he gets very very aggressive like when things go wrong um like it used to be it used to be you know headbutting people he doesn't do that anymore thank goodness um but it's it's now he will just like today he threw something of his that belongs to him he broke as a result broke his heart crying but that anger just goes on for a long time you know it's he's been angry all day actually um so yeah what would be kind of, is there is there a, a simple um solution in terms of a supplement that i could buy that would just help him straight away knowing that i can't i think i would really struggle to get a blood test from him the the sleep and calm and you wouldn't just use it for sleep you'd be using it like half the dose that it's recommended for sleep during the day just to, to calm down the, the nervous system. When someone angers so quickly, it's because on a deeper level, they're vibrating at the frequency of anger all the time. So if you go to the um, Stephen Hawkins level of consciousness chart, uh, and you'll see that there's different vibrations uh, of like harmony and um, joy, there's also lower vibrations of like anger, resentment, and so if someone's always in that state because subconsciously they're holding on to something, which is quite deep to go in, um, then all, all they really need is just something that very slightly would make them angry, but someone else wouldn't face them. But because they're already angry, it just triggers them into that angered state and they can't really help it. It just sort of explodes through their body. So until that trigger is removed, just keeping the nervous system as calm as possible and helping it to adapt to the, the trigger, um, I would use the rest and calm. That theanine, the passion flower, the lavender, and the magnesium are all very calming for the immune system. Mm. Um, and if you could use CBD as well, um, there's very micro dose, uh, then they're probably the, the two best things to combine together for that purpose. Mm. Okay. And is that um, something that you put in a drink or is it a capsule? Or The powder is actually quite pleasant. It doesn't really have that much of a taste, but it can go in um, juice. It can go in a smoothie. It can just be put in water by itself. Great. Perfect. Yes. It's yes, because we tried great. supplements, capsules as well. And that's, that's no good. <laughs> 
Mm. Some of some of Nathan's powders, quite transparently, are not very nice in water, hence why I put them all in the protein shake. But the Sleep and Calm one is quite pleasant in water. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And are they available to buy online or do we need yeah. to go into – yes, they are. Okay. You can go to recoveradapt.com, which is, if you just scroll up in the chat, uh, recoveradapt.com. Oh, and yeah. Because, okay. Because you're local, Penny, you can just pick pick up what you want. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. That's good. I'll take a look at that. Thanks very much. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so Tash has joined us. I've got a feeling Tash got her times mixed up. So Tash, Nathan has probably got about five minutes left. So Tash or Zanelli, um, five to 10 minutes max. Um, do you like Tash, do you want to quickly say hello and introduce yourself? I've got a feeling, yeah, you've mucked, mucked up your times. Hi, everyone. How are you going? Um, no, I didn't muck up my time, so I was just running a bit late, and I'm oh, like, okay. oh, it's still going, so what a blessing, I hopped on. Um, yeah, so, um, hi. <laughs> so ba basically this evening we haven't really done much Nurtured Heart stuff because we've got Nathan on and we've really been utilising him this evening, M mainly we, you know, we shared a little bit about each other, but did you have a health and wellness question for Nathan, just a quick one? Um, I think I was talking to you about it. Um, it was morely around purifying water. There was something that you were telling me or sharing with me um, in regards to um, this type of water that the you hydrogen drink. Hydrogen water. Yeah, Nathan, did you want to touch on that? Yeah. Hi, Nathan. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you too, Tash. Um, so Hi. quick summary with water, like 70% of our body is water. All of our organs and systems are living in it. It's what allows um, nutrients to come in through it and then into the cells mm -hmm. it's what allows our body to send signals through so it's a pretty important medium for us to take care of the first thing i'll do with tap water is get a like i get um, a twin filter system made up goes under the sink and it just removes all of the chloroamine chlorine heavy metals and all the nasties from the tap water. But then it's still just dead water. It's clean, but it's just dead. Um, there's no charge to it. It's slightly oxidative. Uh, and so then there's different machines. We like to use the Enagic K8. Uh, and then essentially what that does is it just takes it through this electrolysis process. Um, it breaks the, the molecule water apart and uh and it basically fills it through fill, uh, fills it with something called molecular hydrogen which is a redox molecule a lot of disease starts from inflammation and oxidative stress that's what damages our cells ages us um, that's what stress is creating free radicals and oxidation so a redox molecule is reducing all of that so it's a the machine basically is turning water into a therapeutic um medium and when you're drinking that, it's replacing all the fluid in the body with this therapeutic substance called molecular hydrogen. Um, there's a lot more to it than that, but that's basically the summary. Um, and if you go to the Molecular Hydrogen Institute, um, they're a third party. They're not affiliated with anyone. They don't sell anything. They just have all the research papers. There's like over a thousand of them. Um, and the basically the Low Melinda School of Medicine in America said of the top 10 diseases that we all face, like diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer's, heart disease, this water, uh, the, the technical term is electrolyzed reduced water, um, it can help prevent and treat eight of them. So, yeah, water is definitely not water. You can really use it to your advantage um, when it comes to like complete health and just like how can I make sure on a daily basis I am doing something to reduce the stress and inflammation in my body each and every day. Um, yeah, as soon as a patient can do it, that's what I would recommend. Filtering their water and then getting it through that machine. Nathan, I'm going to dub on you because when I was first introduced to this electrolyzed reduced water um, and I bought the machine, total transparency, it's not cheap, but it's the best investment I've ever made. And Nathan initially said, why did you spend all that money for? 
And he wouldn't even talk. Like I said, oh, this would be really good for your patients. He goes, no, I'm not telling anybody about it. Anyway, he researched it for six months. I <laughs> kid you not. He researched the research and then he researched it again. He he has now become a spokesperson for the company because he knows this water so well. Um, and now we've been using it about five years and I do not drink anything else. I, I won't drink bottled water. I won't drink tap water. I take my um, electrolyzed reduced water. I call it my magic water everywhere I go, even into fancy restaurants. Um, and I'm, I'm a cheap date because I take my own water everywhere. It's paid for itself 10 times over because I don't buy anything else to drink. Uh, that's what I drink. And I use it for so many, like we could talk about this, but there are some modules from Nathan on the water in the um in the in the course module, uh in the course um um portal that we've got. So um yeah, there's some really great talks that Nathan has done on water. So you can go and listen can to I, those. Can I just share something really quickly too? Yeah. There was there's a video and I can I can send it to you if you want to upload it. I don't know if anyone wants to see it. It was literally horrifying. I don't uh, buy bottled water from the stores, but I know a lot of people do buy bottled water. And I have in an absolute pinch when I've forgotten my water bottle, bought a bottle of water, but it's not an often thing. But anyway, there was a guy on the Gold Coast who actually did this experiment. I think it was two weeks ago where he lined up all of the store bought water and cafe waters like just waters wherever so, uh water from anywhere that you can think of all the different waters and he did that test the electronic test on the on all yeah, the waters to I see how much test, yeah did it and and all of it like nearly every single bottled water the only the only packaged water that showed 100 percent safeness was this was the puree water um from like as a as a product from coles all the other water bottles, like the pumps, the the whatever kind of water you can think of, I will actually find it and load it to you because, guys, I'm not telling you if you buy it. Like, it, honestly, if you buy bottled water, please don't buy bottled, bottled water. It's toxic. Literally, it's toxic. We've done all those tests too, Jenna. We used I was horrified. I showed my kids. I was like, look at this. Like it's even another reason why, like we don't buy bottled water because of the because of the um, plastic content, you know, and the BPAs and all the rest of the stuff like that. But like just the garbage that was in it was literally horrifying. And when I look around on the weekends, especially, and I see kids and parents and everybody's, you know, buying their bottled water with their drinks or their with their food or whatever, I'm just like, oh my gosh. In five years, I probably had to buy about three to four bottles because I've forgotten it and I've been desperate for water yeah I mean three to four times in five years <laughs> so I take it every, like car keys water like it's just natural for us isn't it Nathan well, um, you yeah. saw me drinking the entire time that's like a litre and a half it's empty yeah, yeah. yeah I've, that's, why, that's I've been, why your skin looks uh, good guys I need to talk to you about that machine Nathan yeah, yeah, the machine. Anybody who's interested in learning about that machine, just let me know. Um, it is an investment, but it is a, an investment that I believe we should all make. Um, mm. Right, Zanelli, you've got a very quick question then. Um, um, maybe NAC, what's it good for, and DMSO? Is that, You might be better off asking the question, Zanelli. I don't know if I've said that properly. Okay. Yeah. I think I just heard you mention it, but it was just going so fast um, because these products I've heard about, um, I actually have even the DMSO in the house. But then, yeah, I, I just sometimes put it in my water and drink. Yeah, I'm not sure where you were, what you were saying about it. Just a little bit of clarity there. Yeah, so N-acetylcysteine. Uh, is a precursor to one of our main antioxidants called glutathione. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But N-acetylcysteine has had so much research into behavior, allergies, um, mm -hmm. antiviral, immune enhancing, uh, repair. They're, there's a huge, from Orthoplex, they've put a really nice, chart together of all the things N-acetylcysteine does, what studies, it's all referenced, what dose. I'll try and dig it up and, and upload it. 
but N-acetylcysteine is yeah a very good precursor to glutathione, and it's good for over methylators because it helps convert the convert down that glutathione pathway instead of going to the acetylcholine pathway. But you can use it just as an anti-aging supplement. You can use it as an anti-allergy supplement. Um, if you've got liver mm-hmm. issues, it can be used for the liver. So it's just a, a it tastes a bit sulfurish though, because cysteine is like uh, like a sulfur compound. So it sort of tastes like you get over it, but you, you can sort of just you, it's a different taste. Mm-hmm. Um, now DMSO, you, I mentioned DMSA. Oh yeah, DMSO is. Which one do you have? DMSO, I assume. Yeah, no, I have the O. I wasn't sure if I heard you right. No, DMSA. But a. I can tell you what DMSO is good for. So DMSO, dimethyl sulfur oxide, it actually is a byproduct from um, trees when they make paper. Um, it does a couple of things. It provides a very good source of sulfur for the body. It also provides an additional oxygen molecule for the body. So when you're consuming it, it is increasing the oxygen saturation of the body. If there is any sort of pathogens, um, it helps to oxidize and, and kill them. Um, and if you use DMSO topically, whatever you're rubbing into your skin with DMSO, it acts as an amazing carrier. So it drives the, I don't know if you've got... If you're trying to rub something that doesn't really absorb very well topically on topically on the skin and you combine it with DMO, you get like an instant 50% greater penetration. So if you've got skincare and you want to and you want to improve your skincare, you put a few drops of DMSO on first, and then whatever skin serums you're using, they'll go in way deeper. Or if you've got like for pyrol, sometimes they use pyrol cream. Um and if you want to make sure you're actually absorbing as much as possible, you drop a few drops of DMSO on the skin first, diluted to at least 70%, uh, and then rub the products in on top. Um, so there's a lot of medications that actually use DMSO as a solvent. It actually helps dissolve things and drive it deeper into our cells. So when you do mix it with supplements and a drop form, um, it can help the, help you absorb them better but it is probably best topical uh, unless you've got some sort of pathogen or you're fatigued um, or, yeah. But there's a good book on Amazon. It's like 20 bucks. It's like DMSO uses. It has all the research and things you can do with DMSO. It's very inexpensive. The only downside to DMSO is you take enough of it and eventually you develop a slight, uh, like, Ode, uh, oyster smell it does go away um, but apart from that it's quite safe mm, I didn't even know about that do we use that Nathan? yeah I don't even know well, I just take everything that Nathan gives me I don't even know what I'm taking half the time thank you so much Nathan and everybody asks really great questions and how absolutely knowledgeable is Nathan he still amazes me like really he does We obviously are not going to have time to do any nurtured heart questions tonight, but I think, do you all agree that was worth having Nathan? I I said to Nathan, can we have 20 minutes? So thank you, Nathan. We value the time that you've given us tonight. And if I suck up really well, he might come on for another session in, 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 you know, another month or so um, to answer some more questions because I think as we progress in our journeys that there are going to be other things that come up and as we you know learn more things then other things you know become uh, um yeah something that we want to know about so i i'm always learning from nathan so much and how how lucky am i to have him as my son he just goes mum take this take that take this take that and he does all the research and just he's amazing and i really appreciate nathan your um your ability to research things to the point where nothing that comes out of Nathan's mouth is not researched and that he knows well. Like he's not going to speculate or, you know, just make stuff up. Whatever Nathan says, he knows and he's researched. Otherwise he'll say he's not sure. 
So I appreciate your diligence and the amount of effort that you, you know, put into researching, not only for your own health and for your patient's health, but for our family's health. We're very grateful to you. And I know that, you know, all of the people here are really grateful for your input tonight. So thank you, thank you, thank you. If you have any further questions, um, if you have any further questions, you can put them in our little group chat and I will relay those to Nathan. Um, in the meantime, for the next fortnight, so people that are currently on the call tonight, you are in so, all in different um, spots with the Nurtured Heart Approach. Some are doing revision. Some are, have been in a few weeks. Some have been in more, more than just a few weeks. Some are just getting started and Kirsty is yet to start. So we're all in different places. And the great thing is, is that it doesn't really matter. And the idea is that you know, in the next fortnight, we'll come back. So in the next fortnight, I want you to really, you know, focus on whatever module you're up to, or if you're doing revision, go back, you know, start at the start again. If you've got the recordings, just start at the start again, as if you're doing this course all new um, as revision, but just, you know, start, start it from a new and just remember to keep the Nurtured Heart Dance going, regardless of where you're at, do the steps that you know well and practice the steps you know well. Don't stress about the steps you don't know yet, that you've got to get it all right because you're not going to be able to do the dance until you learn the steps properly and practice them. So uh, you have to be um, self-motivated to do that in this way that we're doing this course this time because you're listening to the content in your own time. I'm not on your back saying, are you doing the content? Are you listening to the content? Are you practicing? You've got to pull that out from yourself. You've got to have the motivation. Um, pop whenever you're in the car, have your modules, have one on your phone ready for the week. Okay, I'm driving for 15 minutes. I'm going to listen to 15 minutes of it. I'm driving home for 15 minutes. Have it ready on your phone so you can press play as you're driving off. Um, while you're in the bathroom, like there are so many places that we can be listening to this. There's no excuse to say I don't have time. And then practicing it is just relationshiping. We have to use the words. We have to say things. We have to communicate in relationship with each other. So practice the nurtured heart way of communicating and relationshiping. So probably that's all we've got time for tonight. Um, we, we normally do keep these to 60 minutes. But appreciate Nathan's time this evening. Appreciate all of your amazing questions. Thank you for your commitment on getting on tonight. I, I really I really want people to be committed to this. It's one call a fortnight, one call a fortnight. So if you're listening to the recording and you didn't get on live tonight, do everything you can. Put it in your diary. One, one session a fortnight is not a lot to commit to for your health, your wellness, and your family and your relationships. So thank you, everybody, um, for a great night. Thank you so much, Nathan. Appreciate you all. And uh, keep in touch in the chat, and I'll see you in a fortnight. Bye for now.